Another set of terms essential to distinguish between in this discussion is data versus big data. Data in the context of analytics refers to raw facts as well as information and knowledge derived from processing data and experience, typically historical, incomplete, and potentially inaccurate. Data also refers generally to structured data collected by information technology. Data are captured within an entity that has control over its collection, ranging from a single physician practice to a large integrated delivery network or health plan. Big data, on the other hand, generally is defined by the following four dimensions, or the V's of big data. Volume. Big data is explicitly defined as that which exceeds the processing capacity of conventional database systems, requiring instead distributed processing solutions, which we're going to look at later in this lecture. The next V is variety. Big data implies not only structured data, but semi-structured and unstructured data from all possible forms of collection, such as logs, events, sensors, clickstream, speech, social media, medical devices, etc. Velocity is the third V. This refers to the fact that data streams into processing systems at very high speeds and is processed in near real time. And the last V is veracity, which refers to uncertainty about the quality of the data, with the expectation that the volume, variety, and velocity of the data may overcome quality issues. Big data has largely emerged as a result of the web and its vast collection of data as well as the propensity to support extensive sharing and uses of data in many new ways. To better focus on our discussion of analytics, we should also compare the processes of data collection, analysis, and use with the newer and more sophisticated processes of modeling, predicting, and improving intelligence. In comparing data to big data in the previous discussion, we observed that data with respect to analytics is generally structured data or information and knowledge derived from structured data and made available for further processing via a structured format. The structuring of the data is made possible by two things, data sets which specify the variables or what data to collect, such as patient name, patient age, date of admission, principal diagnosis, etc. Code sets which specify what values of any given data element in a data set are valid values, such as for patient age, where metadata would specify such as that the age field, if you will, must contain data between 1 hour and 125 years or something similar. Diagnosis codes may be specified as any code within the ICD-10 classification system, or in some cases the specification may be more precise and limit the codes to only certain codes, and there are certainly other code systems as well. Data are maintained in certain types of structures depending on the primary use of the data. Data repositories and data warehouses are massive databases that collect data. While both store data, they differ in how the data are used. A data repository is primarily for online transaction processing, or OLTP, such as in a laboratory information system that receives and processes lab orders and test results, or an EHR that collects and processes data for individual patients. These are called transactional because, like claims processing, they support one-to-one -one transactions. Data warehouse is primarily a term used for an online analytical processing, or OLAP, OLAP, of data. 
This is derived from data repositories and other sources and used for advanced data mining and other analytics to create intelligence. I note here that business and clinical intelligence is used instead of a term that might be called health intelligence to describe the output of analytics. This would be an ideal term to describe the integration of business and clinical intelligence, but unfortunately health intelligence is actually the proprietary name of a company. Registries are still another type of structure maintained locally, nationally, or even internationally. They're compilations of data that meet the specifications of a given data set, for example, a tumor registry. The tumor registry data set may require specified ICD-10 diagnosis codes for tumors, date of diagnosis, and other data limited to the specific use of the registry. Registry functionality is a term sometimes used to describe the ways registries are used, such as to generate tumor statistics, to notify tumor patients of needed follow-up, or to conduct research on specific types of tumors. In fact, many EHR users lament the fact that they EHRs do not support registry functionality for population health management without moving the data into a registry or a warehouse. And again, this is due to how the data repository is structured to focus on one patient at a time and not multiple patients simultaneously. Modeling, predicting, and improving business and clinical intelligence are the steps beyond data collection, analysis, and use, and what would be considered routine use, really. Today, most business and clinical intelligence is derived from data that might best be described as bigger than data, but not big data. In other words, it integrates both business and clinical data, but data also from multiple patients, and is just starting to integrate structured and non-structured data curated by the healthcare system, but definitely does not yet go so far as to integrate data from non-healthcare curated sources, such as social media sites that support health discussions, etc. This is largely due to big data's veracity and to some extent its velocity. Some examples of uses of modeling, predicting, and improving intelligence with respect to the business side of healthcare include case mix for contract management, cost analysis, utilization trending or case management, predictive financial clinical modeling, risk stratification and management, and some forms of population health management. Examples for the clinical side of healthcare intelligence include registries for care management, prevention, transitions of care, which are really registries as we've previously defined them, plus analytics capabilities. Warehousing for at-risk patient data mining, clinical decision support development, and evidence-based medicine. Info buttons for point-of-care knowledge acquisition. Gamification to engage or instruct healthcare professionals, patients, caregivers, and others. Computational medicine for disease modeling for therapeutic interventions and precision medicine. <laughs>